Welcome to Nashville Restaurant Radio, the tastiest hour of talk in Music City. Now here's your host, Brandon Still. And welcome to Nashville Restaurant Radio. My name is Brandon Still, and I am your host. We are powered by Gordon Food Service. We have some amazing people on the show today. We are talking with... Josh, Anna, and Maria from Tantissimo in Malavida. And uh, these are the folks behind El Dorado, El Leon Dorado. Back in the day, they did the Taco Bell uh, discontinued item pop-ups during the pandemic. And we talk all about those here today in this episode. I didn't, I, I, I want to say introducing you to Malavita because these people are absolutely amazing. And if you don't know about them, and I knew of them, I did, did not know them personally. So this was really fun for me to get to learn them. And I was really excited to put this episode out because the first first half of it, we're like getting to know each other. And the second half, we like just like dive in and we find common ground and we have so much fun. This was a really great episode. Now we did this episode like a week and a half ago. And I was really excited to put this episode out this past Friday because that's when it was going to come out going into the 420 weekend. There was a lot going on there. I did not do that. And um, I'm going to tell the story as to why I did not do that. And I've hesitated. I've thought about this. I've laid in bed over the past two nights and I've thought, do I tell this story today online uh, on the show? And I think I'm going to tell the story Because my week this past week was probably one of the worst weeks I've ever had in my life. Um, We went into Saturday night last week and we watched Saturday Night Live with uh, Ryan Gosling. And it was funny and it was great. And I went to bed uh, around 11 o'clock and I woke up at 3.05 because I had a cough and my wife said, Hey, go sleep in the guest bedroom. (laughs) You're waking me up. So I said, no problem. I grab my phone. I walk into the guest bedroom. I sit down and look at my phone, and I have 17 mixed missed text messages. 3.05 in the morning. Um, I have family that lives in California, and I have some cousins. My first cousins are uh, my mom's brother's kids. And one of them is Blake. He's the oldest. And then the second is Trent and... um, There's two daughters as well. Uh, I get a message and it's from Trent and he says, hey, my brother Blake, um, who is a pilot, his plane went down and we don't know what's going on. It's in the San Bernardino Mountains. We know where the plane went down. We have to go find it. It's in a very remote area. So I, um, it was very challenging for me because um, Blake is one of the most special people in the world. And so I immediately book a flight to California at 3.30 in the morning. I walk in, tell my wife, we start praying. We're scared. And so um, I land in L.A. at 10.30 that morning. I mean, Sunday morning, I'm in LAX. And on the drive from LAX to my uncle's house, where kind of everybody was, we're we're trying to figure out what's going on. They've located the plane. There's a search going on at 7 a.m., I get the news on the way home that he has indeed passed away. And um, this was Sunday morning last week. And I was heartbroken. I still am. This, this, is, this is hard to talk about right now as I'm sharing this with you guys. So Sunday was a very sad day for me in California with all of the family. But I would not have wanted to be anywhere else. I needed to be there and to be with them. And um, he was 35. So that's a really tough one. He was engaged, and uh, we just spent the whole day hugging and crying on Sunday. So then Monday comes around, and that was another day. It was a tough day. Uh, Everybody there, I come home. I flew home on Wednesday morning. I spent the afternoon with my family, hugged my kids very tightly. And then Thursday, I get in a car, and I drove to Florida. We had a leadership retreat with our company and we were taking everybody down to Florida to do a couple days at the beach and we did a fishing trip on Friday and it was amazing uh we caught a like a hundred fish I caught a 150 pound shark 
it was out of control. 30 minutes to reel the thing in. And we obviously let it go. It wasn't, you know, we're not trying to catch sharks to kill them or anything. I didn't, the thing, I was just, I've got something big and it ended up being a shark. It was pretty cool. Uh, so I got pictures of that. You can go to my Instagram if you want to see pictures of that. I'll put them up there. But that night, I get a phone call from my wife and she says, is she, she's hysterical, crying, and our cat the beloved Mr. Business um, was our cat's name, and uh, he got hit by a car. So our cat got hit by a car on Friday night, and um, so I just left. I got back to the Airbnb Friday night, and I got in a car at 3.45 in the morning, and I drove back to Nashville on Saturday just to be with the family. And um, here we are Sunday. I did not get an episode out on Friday. This episode did not go out Friday <laughs> and for everybody who is in my life and I talk to regularly that knows of this about me, I don't need, I'm not telling you this story because I need sympathy or I need you to tell me how terrible it is. I know it's a really shitty thing. This has been a bad week. I tell you these things because if there is somebody in your life or anybody in your life, go hug them. <laughs> This is this is a uh, this world you have no idea one day to the next whether or not you're going to be on it and if you have somebody that you love or if there's something petty between you and somebody else call that person tell them you're sorry tell them you love them tell the person next to you that you love them because you might not get that chance again and if you have pets hug them tight because you don't know that either. That's one of those things that was, um, we're still pretty broken up over this. And, uh, I appreciate you guys listening. This has been a really tough one for me to even tell this story. And I only tell you this story so that you can understand kind of what my life was like for the past week. And then you can understand that, um, life is short and you need to put aside petty BS and more hugs, more more love to people and um yeah that's what I got today that that that's all I can muster up and um we've got a big week coming up we're going to interview Gloria Johnson on Tuesday and I'm really excited about that conversation with her I have several more episodes that are ready to come out we're going to start putting these things out there and um I just thank you guys for listening today I don't want to start this episode off on a downer, but it had, I'm sorry, it had to be done. Uh, this episode is so much fun, and it was almost like a pre-time for me because I was just completely happy. And, um, yeah, all right, I'm just going to end this up, and we're going to jump in right now with um, Anna, Josh, and Maria from Tentissimo. Super excited today to welcome in Anna Aguilar and Josh Cook, and they are owner, partners, couple, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're together. Um, they are at Malavida and Tantissimo. Yeah. Did I say that right? Malavida. Yeah. What, did you, what did I say? Malavida. Malavida. Okay. We're also joined with Maria Escomilla. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Escamilla. Escamilla. <laughs> so close. She as well as a partner in all of this, but not. You are a couple. We're not a throuple. You're not, <laughs> not a throuple. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Okay. Well, welcome to Nashville Restaurant Radio. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having We're us. We're excited. So, if you don't know what Tantissimo is uh, or Malavida, and you're wondering who these folks are, um, they ran El Leon Dorado through the pandemic. And you guys have been a couple, I think, since like right before the pandemic. Is that how that worked mm -hmm, out? Right before. Yeah. Let's start off with a good love story. <laughs> how did you guys meet? Take it away, Corazon. <laughs> we, uh, we met at Husk. Um, I was, I don't know, sous chef at the time. Okay. And she was a server. 
Oh, this the classic. old sous chef server <laughs> hookup. Classic love story. Yeah. That's how it is. How did you? Well, we who, met who when the, you were a prep cook and I was a server assistant. So. Oh, so you both got like together, then got promotions? No, no, we we worked through the front and the back of the house, and then eventually just caved to each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, wh- who made the first move? Uh, I guess I was being flirtatious, but. I made the first like action move. Oh, I'm not talking about like, like, like asked you out. Did you guys like go have drinks after work or like, how did that thing work out? I think someone told me to come where you're at. <laughs> was it, uh, <laughs> the look in your face is amazing. She's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I just remember we were at the box after a shift, uh, with like a lot of other people and then. I was finally single, so I, like, stuck around longer than I normally would have. And oh. then we were the last people there, and, like, Raven was there that day, and by the time she left, it was, like, really obvious, like, oh, these two are staying behind. And She was like, we'll leave you alone. Yeah, and then we hung out. Uh, I was thinking that time at Crying Wolf. Yeah, that... What? I don't know what came first. I don't know what, I well, don't see, know what came first at this That's point. why we do this. We do this so that you can have this somewhere on record... For your future, you'll know when you yeah. ever you have children like twenty the years story down the will road. Keep changing. Yeah, be like uh, I think I made the first. No, I don't think I did. Okay, <laughs> so you got. And when was this? Um. Well, it was like. Okay, <laughs> Josh actually had Music City pop up before any of this. Before I was involved in really food in any other way, but being a server, and I just like attended his pop up because I knew that. There was something flirty going on. So you were a fangirl. I was a fangirl <laughs> for the day. Yeah. Nice. And he actually had like a, there was like some sort of giveaway of like a really oh fancy yeah. date. And I bought like eight tickets. That was like my declaration of love. Like I made sure to bring a, a lot of people to his pop-up. And then there. he made sure that I won that raffle. We never went on the date. Like what? there was like a limousine, a show, like a sh- all sorts of stuff involved. And we Are literally. Are you telling me you had a rigged? raffle yeah yeah but we never <laughs> cashed it in so by the time we were actually going out he was too embarrassed to like actually ask me on the formal date so he owes you that date is that still <laughs> is that still available Wait, why it's not I? no i asked like six months later because i was going to use it with someone else and they <laughs> said it was still available but then i think we need to make this date happen if you're listening to this and you have a limo company or if you have a restaurant and chances are you do Let's set them up. Let's make that date happen. I think we should make that date happen yeah, for let's you do too. It. We deserve it. Yes, if you and we'll we'll you, you can come back and tell us how it went wherever we went. So this was 2019 ish, late 2019, mid 2019. Yeah, late 2000. By the time we became really a couple, like that, we couldn't deny anymore. It was uh, November of 2019. That was the real start. Oh, so love is blossoming. You're going into the holiday season. Everything's going great. How do you guys know Maria? I worked with Maria at Salsa Puerto Rican restaurant. Oh, that the one over there by like Cummins Station, like that uh-huh. little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love that place. That she place was, was cool. It's it like, was amazing. It was our second home for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you one of the owners there? What would you do there? No, um, I actually started fresh off my 18th birthday bartending what? there. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have a good mafongo? Absolutely oh my god! Yeah, amazing. I miss that a lot. Oh. It's something uh, we want to we want to bring back at some point. Yeah, I, I still keep in touch with the owners, and I actually spent Christmas with them this last year here in Puerto Rico, or there in Puerto Rico, and we have. The you went to Puerto Rico. I went to Puerto Rico. Where, where were the, what part of Puerto Rico? They're in San Juan, and they oh, actually yeah. operate a restaurant there as well called Waikiki. So I still really? keep in touch with them. Yeah. And we have all the recipes. We've got their blessing <laughs> and may just be a little, you yeah, know, a few of the, a few of the things we really miss might come back. Mm-hmm. You got to do like a Puerto Rican pop up. That would be awesome. Maybe. I love it. Okay. So you guys, you guys, you guys know each other a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super long time. We're best friends. Yeah. When did you guys decide you wanted to get in business together? Uh, I guess. When the Henry James thing happened, she needed, like, a real chef to take over the kitchen. Um, Because I was doing, like, street food um, and family recipes. But uh, what Andy had in mind for Henry James was, like, elevated small plates. And I was like, I've got your guy. we got Josh misses cooking. He's got to get back in the kitchen, and I need to grow. And 
So, yeah, we went to Lulu and had a chat, and then he came on board last year officially as a partner. Nice. And then Maria came on board shortly after because uh, we, were, we, were, we were looking to buy that building. Um, Where, what building are you talking about? It's actually Roy's Tavern. Tavern now. Roy's. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we were knowing that we wanted to, like, make something official and expand, and Maria came and, like, helped me bartend and turn that – uh, place around for a short period of time while we were figuring out what was going to happen there. We ended up taking over the management for the whole thing for a very short period of time, but it was it was a fun little trial period to try uh, Latin American cocktails and salsa nights and all of that, and she came and helped make all that possible. Yeah, and, you know, our roots were bartending. That's how we met back in salsa. Yeah. So it was nice to rejoice and really enjoy the process of creating new things together mm-hmm. what part of town do you guys live in Nor- uh, north nashville it's like 22nd and buchanan so in march 3rd 2020 there's a big tornado that comes through yeah. were you guys affected by this were you yep, yep i wasn't living with her yet uh i was living on the east side but uh, either way i mean yeah. <laughs> but she got her like two houses down it was completely destroyed destroyed and <sighs> Uh, that may have expedited like us moving in together and then eventually like us having the business everything like was definitely like thrust upon us by the tornado and then the pandemic um so tornado happens holy shit all this stuff goes down you're two houses down you guys maybe hey we should probably think about living together i was really scared that night whatever be cool if you were here and then two weeks later pandemic hits Mm -hmm. were you guys working at the moment that like on March 17th, like St. Patrick's Day, 2020. What were you guys doing? I was at Husk. Yeah, we were still, I was at, Husk. still at Husk. Yeah, I was executive Sue at that time. And then it closes. Yeah. And uh, who was the chef then? Uh, chef Katie Koss. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And Josh That's right. was executive sous, sous chef at the time. Nice. Yeah, it, it hit and then we closed. And then we got it. You, you and Julio... Um, planned the pop up that we did at Chopper. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of the start of him in that relationship at Chopper. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So you guys were planning that pop up, and I actually the probably the whole reason I got into this was because I helped run the register for one of Julio's pop ups at like Biscuit Jam, Nashville Jam Co. or something uh, yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, they weren't. I worked it. You, I worked you, you one worked too, it, yeah. but it was his pop up, and I worked the register, and no one made dessert. There were like five really talented chefs there, and zero of them made dessert. And I was like, I could have made something and sold it because people were like desperate to go something out and spend sweet. money and yeah. do something. Oh my God, yeah. It, yeah. So I uh, told him like, Hey, next time I'll like I'll make something if none of you guys want or know how to make dessert somehow. And that that was a little bit of the start of it for me that piqued my interest because the opportunity was right in front of me. Now, I remember you specifically telling me when you would bake my birthday cakes, I will never do this for money. Yeah. And I was dead serious. (laughs) Dead serious. If it weren't for the pandemic, I never would have done it. And maybe Josh, too, has helped change my mind about a lot of things. Working at Husk helped, too, because I didn't. I was 16 when I started baking wedding cakes and I thought I was going to do it for a living. And. I was not surrounded by anyone who appreciated food. So I was just like, no one cares. I'll never do this again. Yeah. And then working at Hus teaches you like people care a lot about really small details. And I, I'm the same way. So I loved that. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, before Hus, I was working at like, uh, like restaurants on Broadway. And there's, there's like no passionate people there. And I was starting to lose my interest. Well, it's a machine, it. man. I mean, you're just yeah. churning it out. Yeah. Where were you? A uh, place, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's even there anymore, but it was right on Broadway. It was called Crazy Town. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if it is. I don't ever go downtown, so I can't yeah. say if it is or isn't. I don't think it is. I haven't been in a while. I don't know. I stay They probably there. just renamed it something. You do what? I stay out of there. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't, not, that's not a place I go. I mean, yeah. if I can avoid it, I do. I mean, if there's like a hockey game or something, then, sure. I'm, then I'm down, but... Uh, okay, so El, El Leon Dorado yeah. happens. You guys say, hey, look, let's do our own food truck, right? Yeah. Are you involved at this point, Maria? I would pop in every now and then when they were doing Taco Bell pop-ups and all that good stuff. She I would too. rescue us. Yeah. So were you guys the ones that were doing the um, 
Taco Bell, like the the talk that when they got rid of Taco Bell stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh. And you were the ones doing like the Mexican pizzas and yeah. Crunch Wrap Supremes yeah. and all that stuff. We did it the first time at uh, wasn't Bar- it Bar, Bar Sovereign. Sovereign? Bar so- yeah. And it ended up being a little bit of a shit show because that kitchen uh, at the time it wasn't. Was, the kitchen at the time was kind of didn't really we didn't realize how many people were going to show up and we once people started showing up it was like we realized the kitchen was really not fit for how many people we were about to cook for and well that's the most badass idea like yeah. i ever yeah. heard and that's how that's how i got to know edgar victoria honestly because yeah. i went to one of his pop-ups i love you edgar i'm so sorry to say this out loud <laughs> I went to one of his pop ups. I thought it was your pop up. Nice. I thought oh, it because wow. I, I thought. I mean, I know that's that's probably just terrible in so many us ways. With uh, other people, it's okay a lot. if it's Edgar. Well, because <laughs> but like I went, it was like the Southern or something, and I went to the Southern yeah. to see Edgar, and I think I had known who Edgar was, Alabrihe, and I was. It was one of the best damn meals I've had in my life. Some yeah. of the best things I've ever done was going to that because he's just a a genius. But I wanted to go eat. The Taco Bell, yeah. the the stuff that discontinued Taco Bell. Where'd that idea come from? Uh, sc- like doom scrolling on the internet. Just I, I like I see trends a lot. Um, when I'm like going through social media, I just saw like meme after meme, tweet after tweet. People well, they, getting upset. They canceled the um, when like, the whole pandemic happened. The they potato, stopped the Mexican pizza yeah. and all the stuff. It was like, bring the fiesta double decker back. taco. Yeah. Uh, so I did not grow up eating Taco Bell and I, um, I'm Mexican. So I just was like, <laughs> what the hell kind of when he said that, but I like ride with, I ride or die for him and his wild ideas. And here we are, but Aww. yeah, so he was very serious about yeah, this Taco Bell idea. Right and so here. I was like, <laughs> okay, I guess we could do that. And sure enough, people like lost their minds about it, but I actually did have the caramel apple empanada when I was young and that particular item like stuck with me. So I ended up making like hundreds of them for this pop up. And that was really, really cool. Yeah. We were working out of a tiny fry, like electric fryer. We we blew the the circuit probably 15 times that day because we. Oh, man. The way we had to do it was like we prepped all the meat and like hot held it in steam wells. But we, we had every plug filled. Um, we were even using electric griddles for tortillas and mm-hmm. stuff. And like, um, we just couldn't keep up. It was so wild. It was so many people showed up. Um, it was just interesting. It's a big time. learning curve. Front I think I have a little house. bit of PTSD yeah. from that. Are you guys event. doing anything like that now? I've recently started to hint during our meetings that we need to do something like that. And we do have the one year anniversary of the food truck coming up. So uh, we were thinking of doing the Mexican pizza for that, but people are voting for um, taquitos instead. So we might have to taquitos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've had we have like a couple of polls going on our Instagram right now to choose the special for the one year anniversary. I saw a bracket yeah. Yeah. on your website. Is that yeah, what you're doing? That's what like I tried you're doing to do, a bracket and I literally on Common Ninja. I tried, and I couldn't figure out how to make it let you vote, so I ended up just making the polls on Instagram, and that's where we're at right yeah. now, and I haven't <laughs> taken it off the website it's yet. They emailed me today to be like, the bracket is live. I'm like, I know, but you can't vote on it. So I, I, d- I have that common ninja app, too, and I've done a bracket before. We did the best Mexican restaurant in Middle Tennessee. Yeah. It was like oh, cool. 64 restaurants, and we broke it down, and it went, yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of work Yeah, because yeah. you have to promote it, and then each round... Everybody has to vote again, mm-hmm. and they got to go in and put all their stuff in. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. But so that's cool. I like that idea. I love that idea. Yeah, and we did it. I'm actually, coming when it happens. Yeah, we did it twice. The second time we did it at uh, Hathorn, and that was really successful and less stressful because we had the whole their whole kitchen staff was on board, and they opened it like it was just a regular night. We had live music. <clears throat> yeah, and we were able to just. It was a full, like a real kitchen. Yeah. So the second time we did it, we actually were able to enjoy ourselves. Were people in, or did you like do the takeout? So I did Alabrihe one time from yeah. Hathorne too, and I, they, he had just bring it out to my car. Oh, I couldn't go inside. Like, when was this? Like, how far along in? We did both. It was that one was probably, um, I don't know. It was a few months later, but we were open inside because all of our pop ups at the beginning we were hyper focused on. Um, it was almost like a little market. We had a lot of other local artists and vendors come to our pop-ups. So it was really important for us to be able to have 
people actually come through and support those those other vendors. Now I understand Taco Bell somehow managed to get a hold of you all oh, doing yeah. the pop ups. Did they really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they my, did. My goal were they was, like cease and desist? No, that was my goal was to try to get a cease and desist, <laughs> but. They actually were just supportive. Wildly supportive. They it's said a hell of a goal, by the way. Josh yeah. tends to be a liability. I'm not going to lie. But. <laughs> that's, my, that's my guy over here. I can tell him. Like, yeah. ah, you I wanted to Let's push those frame down. it. Frame the cease and desist from Taco Bell. No, but they like sent him a, a sweater and a bunch of like, they sent us a bunch of food that we used for family meal for the second one. Yeah. Shelf, um, shelf stable. They sent uh, a beef. ton of Baja Blast. So we still have some syrup that we sometimes use for pop-ups. We did like a shaved ice with it once. We did a bunch of cocktails at Barsov and Hathorne um, with that. And yeah, it, th- that was just really cool to see them I like the, fully come on board for The it. volcano sauce recipe that I discontinued. Yeah. You got the volcano sauce recipe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Can I say that John Stevenson over at Hathorne yeah. has to be one of the greatest talent scouts and just the most amazing shout out to John Stevenson because yeah, he's great. You got to think, uh, uh, St. Vito's Focaccia, Micah, mm-hmm. Han- Michael Hanna was there. Yeah. And then bagel shop. Uh, what is her name? I can't think of her name right now, but her and her husband on bagel shop. Yeah. Uh, it was there forever as like his Sue or working with him. Uh, I don't think of her name. I'm so sorry. And then, um, you had Ella Brie, hey? You had all, you had you guys, like, yeah. he was bringing in throughout the whole pandemic and just offering his kitchen up. Totally, yeah. yeah like, it was, just good people, man. It was smart on his uh, his part, too. Some people didn't, that we went to and, like, offered stuff like that, too, they didn't understand. Like, they they were like, the oh, concept well, of what, a what's, in it, yeah. what's in it for us? And then, you know, they wanted to take, like, 60% of our food sales. And really? They did, yeah, and they were, I was like, I don't think you understand. Like, this is something to help us both. You don't, you know, we can both win in this. So yeah. it's really, you know, I said he was super supportive. Um, he understood the benefit of having people there like that. And to, to come to his place to see where Hathorne is. Because, I mean, yeah. it was at, at the time, Hathorne was new. I mean, it wasn't yeah. like an old well, restaurant. Chef, people didn't know where it was next to the Clementine. Like, what is this? Chef Evan, um, I can't remember his last Lejonico? name right now. Yeah, how to pronounce his last name is mm-hmm. always hard for me. But um, he was really plugged in with the community. I th- he did like the farmer's markets with Edgar for a super long time. And he came and um, made that possible for us. Like he was very generous and uh, helped coordinate everything with John as well. He was a super cool guy. Part of the reason that happened. Yeah. I'm looking at Maria, my co-host over here. Yeah, she's yeah, she's in the co-host chair today. A little so quiet. I'm, I'm like, I know. I'm like, what do you got? Come on, throw, <laughs> throw something else in here. <laughs> no, for sure. Can um, we? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, can Anna. we tell you what we're cooking now on the food truck? You let's let's almost. Okay. That's a good <laughs> tease. I'm hungry. <laughs> right there. Um, so you do the El Leon Dorado, and then when did that end? And you moved to Tantissimo. Is it tantissimo? Is it oh, yeah. I guess it's... Tantissimo. I, uh, tantissimo. Let's say tantissimo so many times that people can't forget it. Tantissimo. It kind of... I guess when I got a job? No. It kind of fizzled out before that, right? It... Um, so we were doing it... El Leon Dorado, the whole concept behind that was just al pastor tacos. And that was really, like, we made one thing really perfectly. It was Josh's passion project for a while. And then it did become hard to sustain his job plus the prep for Al Pastor because it's the most, like, laborious And you're taco. doing construction? He construction doing and management. Yeah. So, luckily, I wasn't doing, I wasn't physically building the houses, but, like, mentally. <laughs> Do you have a lot of history and leadership and construction? No. Oh. But uh, I'm naturally... Handy. Handy, naturally a good leader. But the only thing that w- I challenged me there was uh, I did, had to do a lot more computer work than i ever done in my life. Phone calls. And I feel bad forever thinking that people who do computer work, it's not a hard job because it's exhausting. He's left us with all of it now. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're back to not doing computer work. So, so. Congratulations. <laughs> I have to do a lot of computer work yeah. and people yeah. work and all of the things. And it's yeah, I'm not my favorite. It, every, every part of it can be really challenging. He, I don't have to do almost any of the prep anymore. I still do all the pastry, but Josh took over like everything I used to get in the weeds with. Um, and I do 
miss it sometimes when I'm drowning in emails and computer work. But the yeah. pop up, yeah, it did eventually sort of fizzle out. We also kind of hit a point where, like, to answer your question about um, hard times, we kind of hit a point where we were like, we should probably take a break from working together. Um, oh, what happened? I I think that like three years in or four years in, we finally realized that we were kind of having like one super long panic slash anxiety attack like that entire time that we were building the business. So we wouldn't necessarily communicate in the best way. And I didn't know him that well. So I didn't really know like, I just thought like we just don't work well together. But now it's easier to like see like who's, going through what um I mean it's still hard sometimes but at that time it was like you already have a job I can focus on tantissimo and let's like let El Leon Dorado go for a while and so that was good I think we didn't work together for like maybe something like six months yeah I think it was good I need you to probably mature a little bit maybe, did you maybe <laughs> learn how to appreciate same. all that extra work a little more too yeah <laughs> I guess just like coming from like a the maturation over yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> just coming from a tough kitchen. It's I guess I need to learn how to com- just need to learn how to communicate better and softer, and be more understanding. Softer? Yeah. Were you a yeller? I wasn't. No, I wasn't. You don't look like you don't seem like a I, yeller. To I me. did yell sometimes, but I was I was never malicious. You know what I've learned? You hear all the time chefs are really um, neurotic or a little alternative and personality types, right? I've come I don't to know find what you're talking uh, no. about. <laughs> I, you, you said it. I didn't say it. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I said alternative. Um, Did and you say it, crazy? <laughs> no, you know. Unhinged, Explorer. perhaps. <laughs> but I mean, you Unhinged. need a little bit of that for the creativeness that goes. Yeah. Uh, the creativity. Did yeah. I just create a new word? Uh, the creativity that goes into what they're doing every single day. I mean, but. Yeah. I guess it's just used to people just saying, yes, chef. And shutting up. Yeah. I wouldn't say he. <laughs> you saw his face when he said that. He was really proud of himself just to hear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have... Th- I Okay, this is a weird thing still to this day because I, when I started working at Husk, I love how much people care about food, but I did think it was a little strange how much people cared about hierarchy, I guess, a little bit, or even the separation between front of house and back of house and, like, how people should be addressed. I thought it was, like, a little uncalled for. A little strange. People's egos sometimes just, like, can't... Like, that doesn't work on me. So I've, but now I've been on both sides of it. So I get, I get the respect. I get the systems. I get it all. But sometimes it's pure ego and I I don't do well with that. Are you getting some of that unhinged behavior as well now that you're in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I've had, I've seen how it's possible for sure. It's hot back there. Yeah. (laughs) Servers a lot of time have (laughs) no freaking clue what's happening and they just, Mm -hmm. the random things and how they course stuff. And you're like, yeah, the fuck are you doing? There can be a lot of that. And then back there, there's a camaraderie because you're all kind of like Samantha ring that in again. Like, Oh, and you kind of learn who the people are. It's a whole thing. Right. And well, it's really easy to, to like ride that division. But the reality is like, everyone's usually working pretty hard. I, I guess I have worked with other people in the front of house who aren't working as hard as they could be, but I was not that person. So none of this ever happens in any of my restaurants, by the way, <laughs> nothing like this. I'm not referencing anything in any personal. I'm just, this is all stare. I watched the bear. So I understand yeah. everything. Yeah. That's very important. What did you think of the bear? Did you watch the bear? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, watch it, Maria? It's on my list. You haven't watched it yet. I've heard about yeah. five references in the last month about the bear and I am not up to date yet the season three is about to come out every and week i tell her she and has to yeah. watch what are you doing it. and i'll binge you know it's that day job thing <laughs> day job <laughs> so when we make it hopefully this is all i'm gonna have more, a little bit more free time what's to your watch day the job bear. i'm in lending lending mm-hmm. i am lending com- money lending money i'm a commercial lender um, for for homes? a no i actually work specifically with attorneys so really I, yeah very specific client base very specific product um here in a local regional bank, so. That sounds very, just like being in a kitchen. Exactly. Very exciting. <laughs> math, I am unhinged math, most numbers, days. computer. <laughs> yes. Yelling at people. So mm. 
I'll ask you guys, what did you think of the bear? Me and Caroline have this big argument because I loved it and she hated it. Oh, really? I, yes. I liked it a lot. Um, it's definitely pretty realistic. I've never worked in like a three Michelin, so I can't totally understand it, but I worked in pretty tough like fine dining kitchens, so I understand it. Um, it's pretty accurate and it definitely puts emphasis on mental health. Because some of the stuff that he goes, th- he's going through mentally, I can really relate to. Um, so I liked it a lot, definitely. I like how it how he kind of t- takes a step back and kind of goes to like a simpler food. Because I've kind of done that right now. Um, so yeah, it was just really cool to see like, you know, his uh, character develop and how he's like, going through all these issues in his head and he's kind of working through it and he still has his breakdowns. It's like kind of and very how do you relatable. Have a re- well, and I thought that was really interesting. Like, and how do you have a relationship in the middle of all that? Yeah. In season two, like he's now met this woman, but it's like, which one do I care about more? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's almost like the restaurant has to be, cause that's the thing I don't think that people understand and being in a relationship together in, in a restaurant, like the demands of a restaurant is very similar to like a child. To 100%. Like, yeah. It yeah. doesn't go away. It's not like, Oh, it's just, we're just going to close this week so we can take time off. If you're the operators and the owners, yeah, you're in there all the time. You're working all the yeah. time. And it's, are you guys seven days a week? Did you guys do a couple uh, days off? Not yet, no. We were at Henry James, but the food truck is five okay. right now. Well, see, so at least you're getting a couple days off. That's yeah. the main thing. We did seven days a week at Henry James, and it, it was excruciating because because we also did it without systems in place and sp- staff and everything was wrong when, at the beginning. But, yeah, I don't have kids, but I very much feel like everything people have ever told me about having kids is exactly how starting a business feels. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're in the middle of that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of the bear? I thought it was really good. Um, I thought that there was definitely humor. I th- did think it's always weird to see stuff like that, like called a comedy, but like f- the, yeah. the seven fishes episode, for example, was like so <sighs> intense. Yeah. However, I did have some like absolute chuckles in there. Oh, it was brilliant. But it was rough. Yeah. I, w- I watched that episode. Um, I think my wife fell. I think she fell asleep during it, <laughs> which I don't even know how. Right. Maybe she wasn't there. Yeah, I, I don't want I open. I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got done with that episode and I felt like I drank a gallon of coffee. Yeah. Like yeah. I was sweating. <laughs> I was triggered. I was like, holy cow. What yeah. just happened? I, yeah. I haven't met one person. that was like, oh, I was all right. Yeah, you know, yeah, it triggered me a we're lot. We're not giving away too many spoilers. I know. I'm like, hmm, okay. I'll That's go. episode I'll go. six in season two. Okay, I can yeah. get to that. You know, and episode today. seven was forks. Yeah, and Richie yeah, and the forks. Polishing forks. Which loved, was my loved that favorite episode of the whole thing. I think it was yeah. supposed to be EMP, right? Uh, was yes, it? It, it was supposed. To, well, the whole that whole episode was based around uh, unreasonable hospitality. Okay, yeah. I mean, that whole thing was him going and getting the. Uh, the all I don't want to spoil yeah. anything for Maria over here, who's Maria. You read the, on, she's behind the time. She did it to herself. <laughs> well, the book. Are you? What are you? Did, did you I read unreasonable, unreasonable hospitality? Yet? You guys read it because of me. It was actually that's not true at all. Well, so it was a like it was a book club book at the bank. Oh yeah, and everybody. I, I love that by the way. Yeah, it's so fantastic. So it was like that's where we that's where we got started, and I'm like, okay, obviously it's relevant over here for me to read it as well, and that's how. You came to know of it, Anna, and then, uh, well, maybe not. No, did you come to know? Not. I actually, how did think you come to know? I it? might have come to know of it through you, or through just like a rest, another restaurant tour, but it definitely wasn't through Maria. Okay, but I think it might have actually we been did a book on club. the podcast. Yeah, yeah. we did uh, okay. a book club here, a month long thing where we talked about reason. Then I had Will Gadara on the show. Okay, oh, who nice. wrote who wrote the book? Oh my yeah. gosh, Dang. I missed that episode. Nice. I actually didn't know that you had read it, but I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it was, I think it was all around the same time because, um, yeah, it was, it was quite a read, I'll say. <laughs> Technically, I didn't read it. I did the audio book. I hate reading. Me too. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. Computer work? I feel like when I start reading, reading a book, I just fall asleep. I get like really high and I can't remember anything. <laughs> So it feels He's like the four foot graphics next to the, the <laughs> place where I read has nothing to do with that, I promise. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'll like read a sentence and I'm like, what did I just read? So but then when yeah. I'm listening, I can like remember every detail. 
But when I'm reading, I can't, I can't remember anything. No. Was That's it the thing. Was it last week where you were quoting a couple of things from there too? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I've, I was asking Josh to read it for a few weeks and it was actually like adorable because as soon as he did start uh, listening to the podcast, it's like every time I get in his car, it's playing and then he has something this to say. This podcast or the book? Um, the book. The audio book. book. Yeah, okay, the audio book. the podcast, Sorry. like the book. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just making things up. I was like, man, the, it's a fan. I like it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, he'll he'll bring things up from the book regularly now. Like, are you sure you don't need to read it again? Because the unreasonable oh. hospitality is like not in line with what you're saying right now. <laughs> he'll just like hit me with those. I use, I, I referenced the book and I did a class on it at, at, at my restaurant at Maribel. And then at the end of it, I had everybody come in and watch episode seven of season two, which is Forks. I know that because it's the episode right after Feast of the Fishes. Yeah. Um, and we all watched it together, and then we talked about it, did the whole thing. But for me, the idea of perfection in the book where he talks about, and th this is so big, and I don't know if I've said this before. I'm mean, probably sure I have. Nobody's going to notice, like, the tiny little things that you do. Like, at Maribel, we have this big house, but I have them, like, clean the, the, the front driveway kind of, like, right in front of the restaurant. Any leaves... Nobody would notice it if there was stuff in the parking lot. But I have a blower, and they go out there with the blower every single shift, and they clean it out. And then every, like the little mats when you walk in have to be facing a certain way. And I like vacuum stripes on them and all the little mm -hmm. things. And it's like, dude, nobody cares about this stuff. And yeah. it's like not one of those individual things will somebody walk in and go, excuse me, there are leaves in your parking lot? Like nobody's <laughs> going to say that, right? But the three people, of us might. Yeah. But no, but but people feel perfection. Totally. Yeah. When you get out of your car and you go, oh, there's leaves everywhere, but right here. And you walk in and you see the stripes. You see the stuff. You go, oh, they're on it. Yeah. Like there's a the moment. Walt Disney quote. It's right? where just, every, yeah, they just, they feel perfection. And that's one of the things he talked about with the little forks and all the yeah. stuff is. But what was, Walt Disney is a very yeah, similar. That's what they were talking about, unreasonable hospitality, where he wanted the, uh, animatronic birds that look like they're breathing yes that's where that's where because the quote they came feel from. it that's yeah, exactly they feel the perfection yes and so. also i think on top of all of that it sets like precedent for everything else like if you're doing things like cutting tape and making sure everything looks perfect even though no one cares and it doesn't really affect the quality of food um directly i think it does indirectly because like if you're doing if you're cutting tape perfectly then, you know, you're going to grill us. You're going to take more time to maybe like grill a steak perfectly or set up your mise en place or keep your station cleaner. It just sets like an attitude and a mentality. If you're doing those small things that don't matter and the things that do, you're doing even better. A hundred percent. What are you doing over there? <laughs> just moving my body. <laughs> just moving her microphone uh, of the body. Yeah. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we're going to come back and learn all about what you're doing now. How does that sound? Awesome. Like, Sounds yes. good. All right. Cali Sober, the totally legal THC-infused mocktail. Cali Sober was created to provide a better alternative to alcohol. No dependence, no ulcers, no liver damage, and no nights you want to forget or mornings asking... What happened? They only use non-synthetic, all-natural Delta 9 THC derived from the hemp plant. It is the real deal. It's the same buzz, the same chill you'd expect from THC. Best of all, Cali Sober is federally legal because it is made with hemp-derived THC, which is a legal substance under the 2018 Farm Bill. If you're a restaurant, you can pick this up through Littman Brothers. They offer three different flavors, Paloma Spritz, ranch water, and berry ginger fizz, all with less than 3% THC by volume with five milligrams of THC per serving. Please enjoy responsibly. Sharpier's Bakery is a locally owned and family operated wholesale bakery providing bread to Nashville's best eateries. They've been operating in Nashville since 1986, providing high quality fresh bread daily for restaurants, catering companies, hospitals, and universities. Their bread is free from preservatives and artificial additives. Learn more at sharpies.com. That's C-H-A-R-P-I-E-R-S.com. Or you can give Erin Moso a call directly. Her number is 615-319-6453. That's Sharpies Bakery. Unleash the Wolf 
with Campo Bravo Tequila. Campo Bravo is a 100% agave tequila with a bold, smooth flavor, perfect for sipping neat as a shot or in cocktails. Campo Bravo is also certified additive free, which means there are no artificial flavors or sweeteners in Campo Bravo like there are in many other brands. Campo Bravo gives you all the bold, smooth flavor you want in a tequila with nothing you don't. Campo Bravo is actually truly farm to bottle tequila, meaning our fifth generation agave farmers meticulously control entire production process from the farm to the bottle to give you the highest quality handcrafted tequila. Order through best brands and please remember to drink responsibly. At What Chefs Want, they deliver the seven most needed product lines to meet the unique needs of chefs and restaurateurs. From local to global, and from staple items to gourmet rarities, they have the variety of products to cover all of your needs. Produce, seafood, meats, gourmet, staples, to-go, and dairy. At What Chefs Want, they're transforming food service by eliminating minimum orders, offering split cases, and providing daily deliveries with 24-7 customer support. This means chefs have the flexibility to order what they need when they need it experiment with new ingredients and keep their kitchens consistently stocked with fresh supplies. It's all about empowering culinary creativity while streamlining operations. Check them out at whatchefswant.com or give them a call at 800-600-8510. Back. All right. So we've been talking about your past. We've got all the history. We know you guys are in love. We know that running a business together is a challenge. We've learned that um, you have this new spot. You have a new truck, and it's not necessarily easy to find. It's not like it's on West End. <laughs> Tell me about Tantissimo. Is I said that right? Yeah. Gosh, I keep feeling like I'm. That's like it's Tantissimo. Tantissimo. I gotta yeah, sound out tantissimo. that. Sing it out. Say, all right, help me out, Tantissimo. Maria. Tantissimo. Tantissimo. Mm-hmm. Tantissimo. Josh, you're the only one who has the Malavita. Tantissimo. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Tantissimo? What do you mean, man? Tantissimo? <laughs> what is the best variation you've heard somebody say? Uh, I I guess I don't. I would probably just black out if someone botched it too uh, badly. Uh, I but, uh, you know, I, 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 I think mom. it's not like so much the pronunciation She's sometimes, it. but it's how they translate it to me. I mean, I, I think you've heard some crazy ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was something. I can't remember. Like, exactly idiots now. all the time mispronounce yeah. it. It's okay. We <laughs> understand. Someone said something about like it's an Same Italian tanto. word and it should be spelled with two S's. I was yeah. like, no, no, it's both. It's she thought like, it was like yeah. tanto. Like, We've oh, had people like a try tanto. to. Yeah. He, try she, to oh, yeah. She, she thought it was tanto. Tonto. That oh, that that means like dumb or something. Okay. I was like, no, no, no. That's tonto, which is dumb. And you can absolutely. But be I don't know how to like but explain the irony of what you just said <laughs> to you. What does tantissimo mean? Tantissimo means so much. So, like I said, we started as I started as um, a, just pastries. Um, and I might have said this off the air, but I was doing tantito pastelito. So I kind of tantito pastelito. Tantito pastelito means a little bit of cake. So cake is like one of my favorite things in the world when it's made well which is very very hard to find um and that's all i was doing during the beginning of the business for myself it was just cakes every single week and um so was then, it a pastry business yeah well i was really just doing cake for maiz de la vida once a week for their farmers markets oh nice mm-hmm. and um then when i started doing my own pop-ups and i needed to do like a bigger menu and I, w- I knew it wanted I wanted it to grow at that point I was fully committed into working in this business full-time and growing it I knew that I eventually wanted to do like greeting cards and just build this like Spanglish brand that encompassed farm to table Latin American all sorts of stuff all sorts of goodies so that's why then like tantissimo is like a big so all-encompassing like word everything. yeah so when and you say Spanglish what what do you what do you mean by that What's what is it you're trying to build or show through a Spanglish brand? Um, it's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Stepping I can't say this there. business is not me finding myself a little bit. It's food in general, I think, helps connect you to the world and to yourself. So moving here from California 12 years ago was a super huge culture shock, 
and finding food um, is something I kind of gave up on for a long time. Um, as far as finding like food that made me feel like home or food that I thought was like, that's really good Mexican food. Um, at the time when I moved here, it was hard enough to find that I eventually just like stopped looking and couldn't even really get uh, fresh like cheeses it was it's so much better now but at the time it was like every last thing I wanted to make I was like let me just learn to make casseroles and that's kind of what I did I gave up on all that and then when the pandemic came around and I saw what Julio was doing and I had Josh's support then I started making things that I missed from home and so yeah I guess I am like there was a lot of that yeah I mean in the in the Hispanic world of uh, Alabrije and and Julio mm -hmm. making food like they remembered it because it just wasn't available and you too yeah totally were doing this as well um they yeah they were doing it first they had the cooking background that I didn't have because my background is only in pastry until this um but I have some really kick-ass family recipes that they don't have so <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's kind of what I built the savory side on and then of course Josh has been a huge part of what it's turned into but I consider myself a Spanglish creature so I like the food to reflect that too so sometimes um we'll have items that are very traditional but they sometimes have a spin or they'll have local ingredients that aren't available in Mexico but the dish is still really authentic yeah so Malavida did yeah. I say that right yeah um I speak very terrible Spanish it's okay I, I'm okay at it. I'm practicing every day with uh, our new hire, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. Um, you have a new hire that speaks only Spanish? Yeah. He's actually, it's funny, he's learning English, He but his English pronunciation is like really good already. You guys are teaching each other? Yeah, yeah. He's this is amazing. Cause I, I told him to like, if I'm not saying it grammatically correct, it's okay to correct me. Don't feel like you can't. He's like, what does that mean? <laughs> grammatically? <laughs> what is it grammatically? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you using these words? <laughs> uh, the Google Translate app works really well. <laughs> or so you think. Yeah. <laughs> he probably thinks I'm either really dumb or just lots a of huge jokes asshole. about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Malavita. Yeah, Malavita, it really started with Anna. She was doing tacos under just under a tent and a flat top grill um, at Mickey's for a while and it was catching on. And then when I came into the picture, we decided to get a little more serious and actually put a food trailer back there. But do more of, instead of just tacos, do more of like the bar foods greatest hits type of deal. So we got like a chicken sandwich, uh, which is super popular. People love it. Most people say it's the best in town. And then everyone else is wrong. Yeah. everyone. Uh, <laughs> then everyone else says it's the best they ever had. <laughs> so the, best in town. <laughs> there is the best they've ever had. I like that. So and then the burger. Uh, I've always been a sucker for Big Macs. Like, I don't really like McDonald's menu that much, but I love their Big Macs. So I was like, They're all good. right, we're going to do a Big Mac style burger the with big the, mick yeah the big mickey yeah and then the old big mick the with the middle bun and everything the special sauce lettuce pickles i think it's a song but i don't remember it but there uh is. i don't know it either <laughs> my stepmom does it. yeah there's a jingle uh then uh, we got then we got the nachos which i believe is the best nachos in town better than bastion even though the bastion i was gonna say you're gonna go better than bastion yeah. on us? we love them too but i mean it's the they're not, not Bastion nachos are kind of <laughs> iconic though yeah yeah it's because no one knows about us yeah Bastion nachos are delicious they're not the same style whatsoever yeah I think those are fighting words and yeah. I don't like it I <laughs> we love I think them. we have a nacho throwdown we I should think. I think yeah. we need to have a nacho throwdown I think you guys should come like park right outside <laughs> of Bastion and you we know, should we invite actually, everybody out for a <laughs> block party we can do a nacho throwdown <laughs> I think we, we may have had a throwdown of sorts, but, you know, mainly when we have a pop-up across the street. <laughs> um, we popped up at Jackalope here recently for Nashville SC games. Nice. Um, and so it's always Haven't fun to just say hello to them from across the way. 
<laughs> haven't done any nachos anywhere around town yet. But yeah, no, I think um, you guys should get a bullhorn and just stand <laughs> there and be like, God. "You like their nachos? Come try <laughs> ours." So uh, I'll tell and you. And then you and Josh Hobbiger can like arm wrestle in the middle of the street. It'll be amazing. Yeah. Oh my god, that it. game they have inside the bar though, we would lose every time. The little the string game. Yeah. yeah. I bet they're really good at it. Now we are so not. But it's fun still. Um, yeah, I would happily <laughs> eat their nachos any day. Yeah, I'll tell you what sets our nachos apart and our, just in general, our food at the food truck is we use lard in our fryer um, because we don't like how seed oils make us feel. So the chips are like hyper crispy and uh, just like a whole extra layer of flavor. Yeah, they don't have that like, like seed oil taste to it. They have like just, you know, lard is delicious. So it just adds another layer of flavor to the Josh also makes chips. his own chorizo with um, Bear Creek Farm pork that goes yeah. on there. Um, same thing with the burger, by the way. That's Bear Creek ground beef. So yeah. kind well, of yeah. unreasonable level of <laughs> meat for a dive bar trailer. Yeah, why not? But it's got to be good, though. I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's the recipe we, for, for success. I think one time we, were, we sold so many burgers that we ran out of meat and I think I decided to uh, I use like another beef I could get quicker. And it wasn't it was still a local farm, but it just the fat content wasn't the same. So the burger it literally tasted way different. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that changed on it was the beef. Every wow. detail matters. Yeah. They do matter. Oh, we use Sharpies, Sharpies local buns. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So good. We love Sharpies. Sharpies yeah. are, are good people. Um Yeah. Oh, Who do you guys use? Uh, we're sitting in the studio here. I'll, I'll take a second. Any of these sponsors up behind me that you guys uh, currently are using? Oh, yeah. And why do you use them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Creation Garden is great because... It's called What Chefs Want. Yeah, no. What Chefs Want is great. <laughs> They're synonymous. Like, it's like WCW equals CG. Yeah, there you go. Oh, cool. So like the same thing. It's like algebra. Well, Creation Gardens is the produce So it's okay if there. you have a Creation Gardens tattoo. Do you have one? No. <laughs> I'm oh like, holy God. shit, I want to see it if you do. That would be so oh, amazing. Man. Don't give him any more ideas. This is why we I can't have, change I our brand way, names anymore. I, I hope have someone's way dumber tattoos tattoo. than that. Is there an El Leon Dorado tattoo? <laughs> no. No, but it was uh, drawn by his tattoo artist. The logo was, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Derek D- Brimsey. Derek Brimsey. Local guy. Hidden, hidden door tattoo. Hidden door tattoo. Yeah. I want to get a tattoo. I have, n- I have not one tattoo. Don't do it. Oh, do my la vida. We're about to finalize a logo finally. <laughs> Maybe that's going to be my next tattoo, but I do have one, uh, and it was that 18-year-old regret of a number eight, but it was, I mean, they call it an infinity sign now, <laughs> but, it's, but, it's, but well, it's, it's on its side. <laughs> it's not done well. It was not done well. Spring where, break, Panama City. Where is it? <laughs> it's um in my ribcage. Nice. Yeah. It, bad place. Why number eight? I, don't know. Eight's I, my lucky number, so I'm like, that's really cool. <laughs> to me, I'm like, know, that's uh, awesome. Maybe that's a better story than when I say, like, I really don't have a reason for it, besides it was a good spring break in say, Panama City. Eight is great. <laughs> eight is, is great. great. Oh, my I, God. What, what, like, what, how do you what argue with that? You know, you you know eight what? is great. I can tie it into food somehow. Eight. Eight yeah. is great. <laughs> exactly. Put a six on the other side. 86. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. 86 me if i ever do that please oh god. i like god. i like it when we're out of shit so much yeah. that i tattooed it on my body oh god <laughs> it's amazing wow okay sorry i, yeah. I i'm dying i want to get a tattoo so bad i would like i want like a whole sleeve cool that like goes like over my shoulder like i i want like a whole thing but i have no clue like, like where to start i want it to like tell a story i want yeah. like, to take a shower like what is that like well, back when I was 10, <laughs> this bear, you know, I don't want to have like this <laughs> whole like a story. Like this story. Well, like, I, you know, like Shane Nasby. You guys know Shane Nasby from Cletus Burger? And he was at the Honey Fire for, he was a founder of Honey Fire Barbecue. Good dude. Um, but he has, he has like both arms or sleeves. And I was, nice. and I was like, dude, tell me about your, your tattoo. He's like, well, this, my left arm represents all of the, like, the struggle and all of the hard times in my life. And there's a, you know, like a death and there's this and all the, all this stuff. He was in the right side reminds me of all the one, like his family. And like, so he's like the duality of life, like the oh. hard times and the good times so that I don't forget the hard times. Cause that's what makes you stronger. And then the good things like remind me. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Like you have like <laughs> the story that goes with yeah. your tats. It's not like, 
I was drunk in Panama City and got an aid in my rib. <laughs> I feel attacked. But you know what? That's exactly why you want to put some thought into what you're going to put on your body. That's funny. I got a chili pepper behind my ear because I like chili peppers. <laughs> See? Yeah. That's thoughtful. I, here's, here's, you want to know something funny? The only thing I can come up with that I'd want to get uh-huh. is an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's my lucky Please, number. Please, let's do it. I, like, I mean- want to get an eight somewhere. I don't know how to do it. Like, maybe I just get one on my rib cage. There you go. I'll be like, I was inspired one day by this woman named Maria in our studio with the eight tattoo. God, that's just embarrassing. I see no problems with this plan. Yeah, I, I, I that would be pretty awesome. I will say that adding a six has probably been the best idea I've heard. So eighty six. <laughs> that I, may be what we run with here. You work in a restaurant. You got a restaurant. Exactly. Your partner in a restaurant. That's what you do. There's nothing else I'm more passionate about. So just say you're eighty sixing all your bad past decisions. <laughs> I use 86. That number 86 sticks with me too. It's like been in a lot of my codes for whatever reason. I am in the bad habit of 86ing things, even in my day to day life. I'm 86ing people. All, all of my <laughs> there you go. regrets. 86, all of it. I'm 86ing all bad things. Yep. Yep. And I'm moving forward in life. Indeed. Don't make me 86 you. <laughs> that, that can be your line. I'm here to I will do it. Don't make me 86 you. Okay. Exactly. Um, See how we get sponsors, off track. Sponsors, did so you sorry. say what we like about what chefs want? Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. Thank you for keeping us on track here. Most, I derailed them. They're amazing. Most of the things are high quality. It's very convenient. Um, yeah. They split every case. Yeah, they'll split every a case. Day. They'll deliver every day. Yeah. They'll, uh, they're, you could text them at like, Two in the morning, which I do all the time. The text and they'll is respond. Great. Twenty-four respond hour customer 30 30 service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thirty seconds. I mean, like it's not like you get a text an hour later. It's like quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've they've been uh, really great, really reliable from the beginning. And then we use we don't currently use SuperSource because we don't currently have a dish machine, but we did use them uh, for a huge part of last year. And Jason Ellis was like a absolute lifesaver. I brought him in to help me design. The Henry James kitchen dish area. It was like a home kitchen when when uh, I took it over, and um, he came in there with like a metal fabricator and a kitchen designer that I had and myself, and we all just had to figure out like how to make it physically fit. And he was down for the challenge, and made they it were happen? great. Yeah, he totally made it happen. How'd you hear about Super Source? Um, there's a podcast called Nashville <laughs> Restaurant Radio. <laughs> That's amazing. They just keep the industry True story. going. I, you know, I don't get a, like a lot of feedback about like people don't call me and we're like, "Hey, man, I just signed up for this account because of you," I kind know. of a thing. But it is always nice to hear that when because, like, I truly like the people that sponsor the show. Like, I believe and they're like my friends yeah. and people like that. I like lean into and like I love. And so, anytime that this is able to help and they're able to get in front of somebody and they can help you because he is legitimately like an amazing guy. Absolutely. And yeah. he's like the opposite of the, the gigantic brands uh, that you might know out there. And we definitely wouldn't have found him without you. And I'm like, I can't wait to have a restaurant for him to step back into he definitely gives partnership a, with us. A level of unreasonable service. Totally. It is that, that, that's the thing. He, he, I just love it. So anybody five days a week, I assume you're closed. What? Mondays and Tuesdays? Yeah. Mondays, Mondays and, Tuesdays and Tuesdays are closed. Yeah. Wednesday through Sunday. What are the times if I wanted to go eat? 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. And we take orders all the way till 2 a.m. And are you there? Are you there every night till I, 2 a.m.? Uh, not every night because Maria helps out here and there. But Sometimes. Gives me a break. I do. I, I and step then in. You cook the food? I sure do. <laughs> um, so, you know, not to compete with Josh over there, but hey, maybe maybe my burger rivals his every now and then. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> does it does it rival the Bad Luck Burger Club? Uh, yes. Oh, oh another oh. duel. Oh my gosh. Another du- see, <laughs> Are we talking a lot of shit in duels. here today? <laughs> uh, no, well, let me rephrase that. I think that. we need Bad Luck Burger Club <laughs> and <laughs> you guys need to set up over there like in the Audrey and June parking lot. We need to have there like a go. burger <laughs> battle with Brian Lee Weaver at Redheaded Stranger oh, for yeah. the green chili burger. They're and super all cool three too. of y'all just need Joy to do like Joyland. If we're going to be at... And Joy, yeah, bring Joyland in there too and then have like a little burger, burger party. Burger brawl. Like, Here's the deal. For thirty bucks, you get in. You get to eat all of them, and then you have to vote. But how do you like? We Let's have to make smaller ones because you know after the first bite Jeez. is going to taste better than 
the fiftieth bite, no matter I, what. I do have to say, um, our burger's a little different. The whole point of it wasn't just that I like Big Macs. It was also because I was like, "Am I going to be the fifteenth person that does smash burgers?" So I was like, "Which they're all great." I just say like, I had to stand out in some way. So my my way to stand out was to make it with the middle bun and make it a little double decker style. And the Bear Creek beef. Yeah, and the Bear Creek beef. Pretty unheard of for street food. Yeah. Uh, who? No, uh, Joyland uses Bear Creek. Yeah. I see. I think Brian does too. Over at uh, Red Over at Stranger. Yeah. Yeah, I think he does too. And I, I, I'm gonna. I think Bad Luck Burger Club does. I think they're all like. I think they all use the Bear Creek because it's the best, and that's how yeah. you know it's the best because the best people making the burgers are doing it. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, we're we're at the food truck. Uh, so if it's not Josh or myself, Anna pops up in there too, and we still we've got a growing team. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, swing by. Six Where's two, Mickey's? 2 a.m. Mickey's Tavern, it's the gem of the east side. Uh, it's pretty much right where Trinity and Gallatin meet, okay. um, beside the Fox Nicoletta's. and Tiger Bar. It's all in that little complex. So I like to tell people if they've never been over there, they can make a night of it. and kinda, yeah. you know. Yeah, if you're not really into dive bars, then there's like two cocktail lounges right there. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, and then... Bowery Vault? Bowery Vault? Yeah. They have like live music every week there too. That's I did, I just love that drove until 2 a.m. Like taking orders up until 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah. And you can order online up until 2 a.m. too. We're on Uber Eats. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We accept orders till 2 a.m. Spell, spell the Mala Vida. Like. M-A-L-A means bad. And then Vida, V-I-D-A, life. So it's a, it comes from an expression in Mexico, uh, me gusta la mala vida. I kind of told Josh about it early on when I would see him at the box every night after work, just like, and just over committing and being like, a, you know, classic chef things working really, really hard and not as like, you like the bad life. You just, it's kind of like rock and roll a little bit in Mexico. Yeah. Um, like just work hard, play hard type of yeah. vibe. Burning I guess. the yeah. Candle at both ends. Yeah. Is that that saying? Yeah, I, d- I did that for years, and I still I I do it today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I still do it. But the only difference is now when I get sick, I stop. That's good. That's, That's good. Well, it's not good because I look forward to getting sick. Oh it's the no! Only, well, it's the only time I allow myself to take a break. Mm. Like the first time I got COVID, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> I get to be alone, Just lay in bed. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I love, went to my bonus room and like closed the door, and I'm like, "I'll see you guys in a week." Like, just send food up. They sit on the first stair, kind of a thing. Dang. But it was amazing. You got to have like, like a Sunday or morning at least or something else. To oh, look I got forward kids, to. Oh, family, yeah. restaurants, all the things. It's, 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 there's no. Are they not working age yet or? No, they're eight and 10. Oh, man. That's now the 10 year old does come to the restaurant and help. I know. He, he there you go. Tables. I mean, they're walking. He they comes in, oh, oh, yeah. They oh, can oh, grab they're a not dish. in diapers. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and the 10 year old will walk in and he will actually like do work. Like he's been in Chagos with me. Okay. Nice. And he comes in and he like, like, all right, dude, you're busting tables. He's like, what do you mean? So we'll go grab, like, one table. I'll take him back to Dishland, show nice. him, like, all right, nice. Forks here. This is what we got going on. And he'll drop it off. He'll be mm-hmm. like, I got it. And I won't see him again for, like, the next hour. I mean, I'll see him, but, like, he won't. He doesn't just, like, walk next to me. Sure. Like, what should I do? Like, he's just intuitive and just starts walking around. Mm. And then if we're eating dinner there and, like, a table gets up, he's like, hey, can I go bust that table? <laughs> nice. Can I go bust the table? Like, I, I got, and I'm, he can see my level of, like, why is that table not getting busted? Yeah. Like yeah. Like, there's, 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 you can't unsee it once you've seen it. And he, like, he that's his thing. He just like, he's like, oh, I'm going to go do it, Dad. I'm going to do it, Dad. Yeah. Like, You're 10. I love that. My that's wife's like, do, be so satisfying. do not let him get into this job. Do, do <laughs> yeah. not let him do this. I'm like, what's wrong with this? <laughs> yeah. Would yeah. you let your kids get into restaurant business? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, <laughs> I think I, I would think about it. Not going to lie. I would ask them nicely. You say that now, but as, as soon as we're short oh, no, staffed. They're going to be working for sure, but I just hope they don't pick it up because I want them to have a little bit more of a peaceful. Not the mala vida life. The, yeah. the exactly. The I want a, vida. Una buena vida. So you want them to be the openers is what I'm hearing. Exactly. <laughs> not the closers. I would, oh, I, I would, I would oh. ask them nicely not to do as much drugs and alcohol oh as I did. Have you? <laughs> 
I don't, I, I don't know if you can avoid that, though. How yeah. do you... Well, I so, did. How old are you? Uh, uh, 33. Okay, so you... You were around, like, when, like, everybody just made cash. Right? I mean, like, now everybody gets paid in a check. Yeah, yeah. Like, in restaurants. Yeah. Like, at Huss, they don't give you cash at the end of the night. No. no. But 13 years ago, they did. Yeah. Like, 13 years ago, they would give you, like, 20 years old, like, you go to work and you wait tables, you leave with, like, 150 bucks cash, and you're yep. like... And, Let's and, go! Like and, every yeah. bar, you wanted a bag of weed. I, I'm rich. I'm rich yeah. today, and oh, I'll, yeah. I'll pick up tomorrow morning. I don't give a shit. Let's go. That's true. And yeah, I'll make my extra forty bucks tomorrow morning. And then I'll work a double. Then I'll pick that up tomorrow yeah, night. Yeah, like you yeah. could do that. That's different. It was a lot easier to party back then. Am I? And, you know, yeah. I, I remember I'd you know leave work at eighteen with a wad full of cash, and it was over by the end of the night. <laughs> Like those, be- the beer was good. The cocktails were better. Yeah, I and didn't start serving until I was like twenty four yeah. or twenty five, which was a mistake. But to start serving or to start that late, long? to start late. Oh. Yeah, I should have done it sooner. Yeah. Got it out of my system, you know. I was actually front. Of, my first jobs were front of house. I was banquet serving at a uh, Hillwood Country Club. When was this? Was that under Perry Seal? Yeah, yeah, it was. Wow. He's a native. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Perry was cool. It was uh, it was tough sometimes. Perry even, even, and Mark even, and yeah, all the guys. You probably saw me in that kitchen a lot then. Yeah, and then I don't know if you remember me, but I was in there a lot. The only guy that he, did you not hear did about you, the yeah, drugs? I mean, <laughs> it was probably not there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, would, that country club was fun to work at because I had a I've always had a crazy work ethic, uh, like almost like probably unhealthy. Uh, we would do set up the banquets, and I would try to set up as fast as I could. I would try to carry as many st- uh, as many plates high as I could go. I think the most I could do was like twenty four at a time with the. Damn, that's impressive. Yeah. Did you ever do like the game dinner with them and stuff? Uh, yeah, but I was always just setting up and breaking down, and eat you know eating the food. What were I you could. doing there? I was selling produce. Oh, cool. I mean, the produce you know, guy. Yeah, I was the produce guy. Yeah. That's what I did. I mean, I would, I mean, you know, my, my, you know my favorite move that Perry would do. All right. So Perry is old school. Yeah. I think he's at Brentwood Country Club now. I don't know. But his okay. wife, were, they, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. I, great guy from Boston. And every time he'd go, oh, step into my office. And he'd walk into the walk in cooler. Nice. And he would, I'm wearing like, you know, dress shoes and slacks and like a dress shirt. And I walk into the cooler and not one time, I learned this lesson early because I knew what he was doing. Not one time that I ever say I was cold. I think yeah. that I think <laughs> that's what separated me from everybody. I think that's why he liked me. Because nice. he would keep me in there for 45 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, man, I think so too. I wouldn't flinch. Yeah. Wow. Freezing my ass ass off <laughs> cold as shit and i think that's how he tested people if you're like hey it's cold and you're like oh, i don't care i'm a chef this is what i do i'm in that and, and yeah. then he would walk you in the walk-in as like a rite of passage nice and you do the one thirty minute thing and you don't flinch he's like ah, oh, it's not gonna work on this guy you don't have to do it anymore nice <laughs> it was a whole thing that There's was like a his move lot to unpack there like yeah. how did that become a thing that's an initiation that's just where right the, there that's yeah. initiation it really is it's what's <laughs> one of those things like well because you get he kind of knows if you work in a restaurant, you go in the walk-in a lot. I mean, if you're a special server, you I used to go totally. crying in the walk-in or whatever. But <laughs> I go walk in the out. walk-in, you'd hit your ball. You go, I go hit a hit a dugout in the walk-in <laughs> and heartbeat. But also, you're hot. Like you get hot and you go stand yeah. in the walk-in just to cool off. Go stand in the freezer. Yeah, you're in the walk-in all the time. On. It's a safe space for sure. It is. So like I think that was like Unless his like it's a safe space. I'm gonna bring you in here and see if you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, he's like you're not a, you're not one of us. I remember one time, he has like a sixth sense about him or something. One time I, I was hungry and I went and stole like an apple. And he like, right when I walked out, he said, what do you got in your pocket? <laughs> I was like. Well, you thought you that, could hide a whole apple in your pocket? But I He's don't like, know. Is that an apple in your pocket? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> I just didn't know how he, like, I would like just walked out the door. And he was like, it's fine, but you need to ask. I was like, yes, chef. He was acquainted with his walking. But yeah, tour. speaking of country, I think I actually oh, it was there's like a sensor well on organized. the apple tree. Yeah. <laughs> I think I worked at five different country clubs and got fired from them all. So oh man, Did you hit all right. So Hillwood, Hillwood, Richland, Richland, which is in Brentwood, right? Yeah, Brentwood. it's in Brentwood, right off Greenway. Hillwood, Richland. Uh, did you do any Hendersonville's? Did you do any I did of those? The one in Murfreesboro, Stones River. Yeah, Stones River. Okay. 
There's one. There's at least. Oh, Bell Mead. I got fired. Oh from. yeah. Were you? Was that when uh, Grant was there, or was that? Because the chef's been there forever. The I don't know if he's still the, there. Uh, Bell Mead one. I was in high school, so okay. that would have oh, been that like was early on. Uh, that would have been like 2007 or something. Bell Mead's a ve- okay. Bell Mead Country Club. Can we talk about this place for a second? Yeah. It's the most interesting club. And the chef there, I forget his name, but he was like very intense and his wife worked there too. Yeah. And, but you could, you like you walk, you park in the back gate and you like walk in and there's like a whole receiving area downstairs. Yeah. And if you got, then you had to like walk up these little stairs into the kitchen where chef had his office centrally located right in the middle of the kitchen with glass all around him. So you could sit there and watch the whole kitchen. Yeah. Like an air traffic controller. <laughs> And it was like you were never not in a place where like the eye of Sauron was staring at you. <laughs> it was like a whole thing. Does it and work? Yeah, I mean the dude. Yeah, he was very intimidating. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> I mean, he was one of the. I, I was on a first name basis with like every chef in the entire city. Dean Pugel over at uh, Richland. Hey, yeah. Chef Dean, good to see you, man. This guy, I was like, yes, yeah, chef. Honor, <laughs> yes, chef. Be my pleasure. Wow. Yes, sir. I'm on it. Like, and it was. Yeah. They've got like the technology now for uh, cameras to like monitor productivity or whatever. And I I saw that online and I'm sure it's super controversial, but I sent it to Josh immediately and was like, neither one of us would ever have to worry about this because we're so like the work ethic is so high. Yeah, that'd be never stop. You'd be like, dude. Yeah. I'm like, I would love this. I'd get so much credit. It'd be bad for the the employer because they would. They would have to hide that from us because then you'd be like, well, I'm doing the job of three people. So you got to pay me more. Do you know that I found out? Like you said, Nashville SC. Do you guys go to SC games? Yes. I went to a few. Football, football. She okay. goes to we went to the first one ever at the new stadium. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I go to all the games. I like. I love. It. I was just there the other night. Did Obsessed. you go the other night? I Did you go see the, the Godoy night. goal last? Oh my god. Sorry, they played the uh, Columbus Crew. Mm, and, no, I missed it. Uh, Annabelle Godoy. There was a Scheffelberg had this pass, and he windmill kicked right in front, like. Nice. Upside down, kicked the ball, scored a goal. It was the most amazing goal I've ever seen That's in my awesome. life. And it was really cool to so see. So cool to be there for that. Um, mm-hmm. I was going somewhere with this, and I completely spaced. <laughs> when I was like, oh, that goal today. Where was I going? The you cameras remember? and the productivity. So they wear a vest. Yeah. Like, they wear like a bra almost. If mm-hmm. you see the players take their jersey off or their kit off, you'll see they wear like this, like, it's like a sports bra that they wear. Did you know that in there, there's like a technology that tracks all their vitals? Wow. So like an that. Apple Watch, essentially, right? So they have these things. So imagine this. You're on the field, and they can track your fatigue, your heart rate, all of your vitals. So they know when you're getting tired. Take Dang. you out. They you're know. The field. They know your average miles per hour, how fast you're moving, who the faster players are. I'm like, there's no subjectivity in that. Like no. there's a dude in a press box somewhere going, uh, Shuffleberg's tired. Yeah, he's ran. He, he's yeah. ran 17 miles. Everybody else is at like 10. He's gone way over. We got to pull him out. Like they'll know your distance of how far you've ran and what you've done and how totally. tired you are and all that stuff. I mean, I feel seen. That's that's yeah. right up there with whenever you know my Apple Watch tells me to get up. <laughs> yeah, my Apple Watch knows more about me than I do sometimes, and it's good. And it takes a long time to put the pieces together of what the data means, but eventually, I'm like, oh, like. I recently found out I'm like still anemic and I'm like, well, that explains my like low VO2 max because I looked at that and was like, what the hell? I'm super active. But yeah, I love having information. We, but, but like you're saying, that's rough because now it's going to be like a comparison, you know, 24 seven. Well, you, you can't we really hide. do you that. Can't, though. You can't just like. Well, well, yeah, that's true. But they've got data. So, you know, now it's you're running. Now you can mile. focus on problem solving rather than arguing about what's true and what's not. Oh, I like it. I, I like what you just now said. She's like, let's find some fucking solutions and let's move <laughs> Like forward. if someone recorded arguments and like, I, oh. I'm cool with that. Like, oh. I think like I would love to know if I'm dead wrong. Cause then so I the could waste less time. Next time you guys time. have a fight, just come down here. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do is just push that little green record button and you just go and then you can go home. Then the next day, listen to it and be like, see, yeah, cool. I'll need like three days right. to recover from like put it, the tail put between it on the internet and let the, Oh no! No, <laughs> no. We let the internet decide. She likes doing polls. We just put, <laughs> okay. polls there. put it out there. That's Who a good was one. right in this one? Josh is way more lovable. If you like, if you like Josh, vote for the cheesy gordita <laughs> crunch. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Oh, see, this is a whole new podcast idea. That's funny. Wait, you guys are fighting? Sweet, come over. Let's go. Or like a reality show only for like chefs that are couples, both of them. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, no, we were walking to the game because I park like at the Wedge Pizza and Pub when I go to the games and we walk and it's like a mile to get to the game. And uh, the guy we were at the other day, I said, you don't have an Apple Watch? And he goes, no, no, man. I I said, oh, man. He goes, do you like yours? And I go, I'm obsessed with my Apple. And I would weigh 400 pounds if I didn't have an Apple Watch (laughs) because I love data like i love i have a screen in here so i can sit here and look at data i need it bigger than just on my computer it's a whole thing but like to constantly know Mm -hmm. how far you've walked today and how all the exercise Mm -hmm. everything like in my competitive nature i'm like let's go well that's true i mean it mine's like been malfunctioning lately so that means if it's not tracking appropriately then i don't need to work out as hard at the gym (laughs) I recently started walking. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Like, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, if you don't get credit for it, it's kind of bullshit. Yeah, like, no, mine's I, broken right now, and <laughs> I, I'm going on daily walks, and every day I'm like, Where, ugh, I'm not pointless. getting any points. It's not even like I'm. It's like the, if you go for a walk without your watch, does it? Does, does did it, you really? Did, even did you really go for a walk? <laughs> no. no. See, I, uh, I gave up on mine. So I, you uh, don't have one. I have one. I I brought it to Thailand, and something happened where it reset, and then. I just been too lazy to like recalibrate it or whatever I needed. I don't know. When what did I you go to Thailand? We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, last last was it last it was year? Right before you jumped it, in yeah. full time into the business. Yeah, I went there. It was, it was last like February. Actually, it was, it was Vietnam and then Thailand for a couple. Did you guys days. go together? Mm-mm. Or you just went like on like a? Yeah, he went on his I adventure go. before joining yeah, the was, business. Construction management pays a good bit more than <laughs> being a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so I saved some money up and I was like. I want I've been always wanted to go to Southeast Asia. And so I went to Vietnam, walked about 15 miles a day for like a week, week and a half and then went to Thailand for like 4 days and then came home. I bought I bought a one-way ticket, which is not smart cuz my <laughs> ticket back was $3,000. Wow. So <laughs> Well, you know, maybe planning. <laughs> I, well, no, but my thing but. was I get anxiety whenever there's like a deadline for something so okay. i was like if i don't have like a real deadline i'll enjoy myself better that's what i thought in my head but it ended up stressing me out more at the end because that's uh, i have to price that story yeah. of his life yeah yeah i i don't know what i th- and not that you i didn't ask this question but it made me immediately think like i wonder from i want to know how long i'm gonna be there because then i can if I'm there seven days and I go, okay, I got seven days. I go to buy these 14 things and then I can plan it out kind Jam of. Jam-pack yeah. an itinerary. But these two days I'm going to do nothing yeah. but sit around or I'm going to explore. But what these days that? I want to hit these things. And then you just, then you, then, uh, then, then yeah. I have a, I kind of like a schedule, I guess. I, I, I'm that I'm way. I like to plan time off because then I can actually enjoy it. And, and we've gotten acquainted traveling because I don't like having time off. If I'm in a new place, I want to be doing something every second of the day, <laughs> which can be really exhausting. Yeah. And but Well, only because the first time we traveled together, I literally told her, I was like, I'm only going if if, if I'm just going. Like, I just, I don't even care if you're there, <laughs> but it's to good if you're there this. because, like, I won't get kidnapped maybe. But, like, we don't really even have to interact the whole time we're there. I'll go to dinner with you one time. And that's what I said. And then we went and she had, like, a full itinerary for all three days. We, like, went parasailing and all these other things I couldn't afford. I was like, oh, my God, you're going to pay for this. But in retrospect, it was fun. Wasn't it Where were you that you did this? We went to Seaside that time. Seaside and Florida. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right down in uh, we did glamping. the handle there. Yeah. We glamped. Yes. How was the glamping? It was pretty. Yeah. I, I loved walking out of the tent and seeing a deer in the morning. That was rad. Yeah. We did. She did, you know, make me agree to separate tents. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I had you didn't to share myself. A tent? That, no, that was good. Right. I, I mean, I thought that was a win. The fact that I was in a tent at all at that point. That that's moment nice. where I saw the deer was my only like moment to myself. But we'll do it again. And was it just like a zipper on a tent that you got? Or was it yeah. like a nice like... No, it was like a nice a no, air yeah. conditioning. Well, no, no, no. The, it was definitely. It's like one of those nice dome tents, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. No, it wasn't a dome. Did you but have a they bed? Had, uh, yeah, there was an actual bed, like a nice bed, an air conditioner. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay. It's glam. Okay. It was, gla- it was glamping. I'm like, are you uh, like going to zipper the thing up and crawl in and I'm, lay like in a I mean, we had, I don't want to say we had sack. to wrap it, but That's it was still. That's my style of camping. It was still real camping because it was, you know, like the, it was a state park. 
Oh, I'm so I'm so bougie. I'm like, what kind of thread count are these fucking sheets? <laughs> I like I I am I am the opposite of you because we had in our backyard we camp out with like my boys. Yeah. And like every time that we I have a tent, uh-huh. I bring like an air mattress out there because I'm <laughs> yeah. I can run a extension cord. <laughs> However, every time like two o'clock in the morning, I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. Why are we outside? <laughs> Like there's a, why, are, why aren't we inside? Well, if you're that close to home, of course you're going to think you're going to get out yeah. into the mountain where you can like really just be in it. Josh is during the beginning of the pandemic, we did a uh, part of the Appalachian trail and then oh, we drove nice. to Colorado and did a lot of that. So with her, I've done some fancy things and with him, I've done some <laughs> very mountainous things and yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle, I guess. I like like uh, backpacking is cool because once you've like hiked seven miles in, like you can't, you can't be like, oh, I'm over this. Yeah. You're in it. Yeah. You're there. You know? And then we got then stormed it, on too. So we were really in it. You don't have any choice to be there. You just had to decide to enjoy it. All right. You've changed my mind. There you go. Something about that does sound really appealing. Like just being like off the grid for a little bit and like, all right, we're here. <laughs> yeah. You can't do anything. I'm going to dive in. I, I can see that. The stars that. alone are worth it. Yeah. And, and it's in. when you're in situations like that, there's only like two or three things that you really have to worry about is like feeding yourself, drinking water and making sure you have shelter. And then, but like when you're at home, even if like you're your day off at home, you're like laundry, the, yeah. the dogs need there's this. No rest at home. Oh, I got to get groceries. Oh, but yeah, if no, I can't. If you're in the middle of the Appalachian wilderness, you know, 15 miles from any type of city, it's like you, you just have to worry about eating. And our dog loved bears. it. Yeah. Bears. Bears. Bear, too. Bears and eating. Yeah. And yeah. Get, I think I, I brushed my teeth too close to the Eating or getting eaten. Just, Got in trouble. Yeah. Just make sure the bear doesn't eat you. Yeah. <laughs> my sister did the entire Appalachian Trail. Started That's in Dalton, wow. Georgia, and finished in Maine. Yeah. Did the whole thing. Uh, Took six Ma- months. Ma- Mount Ma- her husband. Katahdin. 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 Yeah. That's the mountain. I can't tell you. Yeah. When know. did she do that? Oh, man. It had to be like six years ago. Six cool. or seven years ago. That's I mean, a goal she, of mine for sure. She did the whole thing, her and her boyfriend at the time. And they got back and then they got engaged. Well, that's I think they good. were to see if yeah. they could do it. And so she did the whole thing. Six months. But they they, they kind of took their time. And they went, I think they went like all the way up and they flew to Maine. And then they, because it was going to get too cold. So I think they did oh. the, the summit. They summited the mountain and then came back down and met. Halfway. Came like, started going south. Instead of going south to north, they went, skipped they, it and then came back down. They started south? Yeah, started in Dalton, Georgia. So they did like a flip-flop once the, the weather yes. changed. Yeah. Mm. They just they got like halfway up and then went to the top and then started coming back down. Yeah, I think that a lot of people do that style. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. We've gone way off topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what I like to do sometimes, though. Thank you guys for just like, just uh, see, we're like again, like, so tell me about it. Now I feel like, oh, we could just do this for hours. See, well, this it is did, a lot of fun. That trip gave us uh, the best dang beef jerky that we've ever had. I keep wanting to bring that back yeah. as like a late night snack for one of the locations. We basically made beef jerky ourselves with Bear Creek Farm flank steak. Yeah, I think it was skirt, actually. The skirt. one that was my favorite was skirt, yeah. And when, uh, we just mixed it with our rice, so it was like rice Really and beef. incredible <laughs> camping meal. Yeah. Every experience gives us some kind of food journey, unexpected, or ends up somewhere on the menu. Well, guys, we're an hour and 15 minutes of talking, not to mention all of the fun things that happen in the middle, yeah. commercials and stuff. So we do the final thing. Do you have any, uh, this, which is... I would ask one more question, but we're just going to do the final thought. We're going to wrap it up. So you get to say whatever you want to about your restaurants, about whatever you want. It's an election year. You can talk politics. This is your time. Oh, my God. Talk religion. You can tell a joke. You can say whatever you want. You've heard the show. (laughs) The Gordon Food Service final thought. We are going to start with uh, the co-host chair over here, Maria. Mm -hmm. And you get to say whatever you want to say to the people who are listening. Well, what do I have to say to the people that are listening? Um, I like your kicks. Thank you. You know, got to add a little color every now and then. But I would say, you know, we are three gnarly people (laughs) on this journey to really just show Nashville, the Nashville food scene that Latin American cuisine can be done right. And can it be done in a farm to table concept? In the most elevated way, um, likewise, with our farm-to-table picnic 
um, or picnic table selects at Mickey's Tavern, you know, we're really just showcasing some really, really dope ass food. So check us out. That's what I have. I like it. We're going to go straight across the table to you, Anna. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are coming up on the one year anniversary of the food truck, which is like, it's just cool because this past. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yay! Man, I know we could do a whole podcast just on how many unforeseen challenges there have been before getting the food truck and since. And it's been like a really great learning experience. We can do that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, and this is someone who like I, I'm not new to the industry. I am surrounded by chefs and other people who've owned food trucks and there are still unforeseen challenges. So it is a. Uh, it's quite an achievement to make it to a year. And um, the anniversary is on 420. So come to Mickey's on that day, if not sooner. Um, and then we do a Cinco de Mickey's annually. So even before we had the food truck, Tantissimo was there doing Cinco de Mickey's. That's actually the first pop-up we ever did at Mickey's. And why we chose Mickey's was because we were surrounded by industry folks on a crazy day. And everybody was like yeah. really res we respectful of our... We were set up like... It on the deck in the hallway. And if you've ever been to Mickey's, the deck isn't very big. Mm -mm. And you could tell there was a lot of industry people there because every person that went behind us was like, behind, behind. Yeah, like you had to walk <laughs> through the kitchen. I was like, hell yeah. Because it was raining that day. Like grocery so. store. Yeah. Like behind, like herd. Like, what, yeah, yeah. What is this? What is this? What is this? Some guy in a denim jacket. So I, um, yeah, I have to say those two things to please come out for those days. Um, and then just... My personal thought is to uh, continue to support local. I think we're further away from how big that was during the pandemic, um, but it's really important. We recently uh, met a politician who like made a point to mention that he loves to support uh, minority-owned businesses, so he takes it even a step further. We are both, but any local business that you love. Minority-owned, like, female-owned, oh yeah. local. We hit all three. Unicorn. There's the Nashville native. Yeah, and the, there you go. Mexicana and the Colombiana right here. But yeah, whatever local business you love, um, it means a lot for them to have your support. Yeah. Oh, did, you, did that bore you, Josh? No. <laughs> Josh just fell asleep. He just yeah. we just had shit to like shake him to wake him uh, up to do this. <laughs> I had a long week. Uh, um yeah. Final thought. Final thought. Um well we're hiring. If you, he's a true chef. He, he, he really wants true, to sleep a little more. He's a true chef. He deserves like, a little more sleep. It's true, but he I needs, need help. Yeah, uh, we're hiring. Uh, we do badass food. Uh, you only have to work four days a week. Uh, I'm pretty nice. <laughs> uh, he's worked on himself. Yeah, I've worked on myself a lot. Uh, yeah, I guess my final thought is, yeah, support local. Uh, keep your ears and eyes out for what we're doing next. We have some big plans. Um, I don't know. Y'all have anything else? I'm I think you, at, I think you said this. it all, man. I think you said it all. Uh, did I mention we're hiring? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't typically do final thoughts, but I am going to do a final thought today. Oh, yeah. And my final thought today is I did not know what to expect having you guys in here because I did not – I've never, I don't know you. I haven't spent time with you in your restaurant or outside of your restaurant. And I have had so much fun just talking with you guys, learning you. who you are and kind of just being playful and learning about all the other things. And thank you guys for being vulnerable and talking about your relationship and the fact that it was very hard and some of the struggles that you've had, new struggles will happen. Absolutely. I promise. And I think part of that is learning how to do it. But this town is being inundated right now with restaurants that are from other places. Yeah. People have recognized Nashville as a major place and they've come in and they just want that. Na they want to be, we're in Nashville. Nashville's the spot. It's visibility yeah. for them. And this is your life. This is a, a young couple in Nashville who, this is the dream. We're going to open our own restaurant. It's a food truck and we're going to do it really, really well. And where that takes us, I don't know, but we're going to put our heart and soul into this thing and we're going to make really good food and we're going to make people happy and it's just going to be what we do. And I, it's just, 
I love that so much. And I implore everybody out there to go check you guys out. I'm definitely going to be coming by. And not tonight, because you guys are not open tonight. I'm like, maybe to- No, not tonight. Get the like, chi- if it's you guys your first are open time, right now. If it's your first time, get the chicken sandwich. Get the chicken sandwich. It's the best chicken sandwich in the world. Yeah. I yes. labeled that. Nachos, too. Nachos, yeah. Bring a friend. I, get I, it It looks all. like I'm going to have to make several <laughs> trips over. Yeah, just bring some friends, and then just ask us. We'll cut the chicken sandwich in half. You can share it. Well, I will definitely, by the time this airs, I will definitely have gone by there and I will put pictures Yay. of these items on the post when we talk about it. Um, you guys are amazing. Thank you Thank for you. coming in today on late in the afternoon on a Monday. I don't do, I'm like an eight and nine o'clock in the morning guy when I'm fresh and ready to go. And yeah, Mondays are my hell day. So at the end of a Monday to do this, <laughs> I'm like, wow. That was awesome. Thank you for yeah. letting us share. You should partner yeah, thank you for having with us. On, on for your anniversary night. You should partner with these guys, Cali Sober, because they're a THC brand. And 420 is like the international. True. You yeah. should have them sponsor your event. Like, hey, we're going to do our one-year anniversary, and everybody's drinking Cali Sober because it's 420. Sick. You should have a THC component to your evening. We that's should. Such a, that's such a good name, too. That's all I want. You know what Cali Sober means? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm from California. What does it mean? Oh, don't don't <laughs> don't do don't be that guy. Cali don't sober means you, you smoke weed but you don't drink. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's all. There's it's more no, health conscious. There's no alcohol in here, but there is five milligrams of THC, and then there's some CBD as well. So it's um, it's a whole thing. It's delicious, yeah. good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think that that that's how we're gonna end it today. On that that note, got all the sponsor stuff in there. That's beautiful. Thanks for having yeah. us. It's my pleasure. Guys, Thanks. best of luck to you. We'll see you soon. Wanted to say big thank you to everybody who made it out in the studio. And for those of you who are listening, um, yeah, there it is. There's the episode with uh, Tantissimo and Mala Vida. And uh, we had a lot of fun there. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I, um, I appreciate you listening. And uh, I will see you guys this weekend, the 28th. We're going to be at 114 Second Avenue for the Tennessee Tasting with uh, the Giving Kitchen. So I'd love to have you guys there. If you can make it, please buy your tickets at givingkitchen.org. You're helping restaurant workers, which is what we need to do. We need more of that. We need more help in this industry to help people. Coming up next month is going to be Mental Health Awareness Month. And should I maybe uh, right in the middle of that one? We've already got a couple episodes uh, ready to go, and I think you're going to love them. So we will uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hope that you guys are being safe out there. I love you guys. Bye.